So this just showed up here, just picked it up from UPS, the DJI Osmo Mobile 6. And it seems like one of these always comes out around at the same time that Apple releases their iPhones, but it kind of makes sense as a smartphone gimbal is directly tied to the smartphone camera that you use. And why not release a new one each time the best video shooting phone comes out? Now, I'm not going to be the one to tell you that the Osmo Mobile 6 here is a massive upgrade over the OM5 because it isn't. But I think that the general usefulness of smartphone gimbals has increased over the years as vertical style video has become very popular and content creators online are turning more and more to the camera on their smartphones to create the content that they're publishing. So what I want to do is quickly rip through what's new about this gimbal and then I'll show you some of the ways that I've been using the Osmo Mobile 6. So the first difference is the design, although there's nothing that's really game changing, just some quality of life improvements to freshen things up. For example, the new color is nice as it kind of matches the same gray color scheme as the Mavic 3 with the orange accents. The joystick is also a massive improvement. The little thumb pad on the OM5 drove me crazy. There is much more range of motion on the Osmo Mobile 6 for far better control. Now the two newest additions is the screen on the front, which really just shows the shooting mode that you're in, the connection status to your phone, and the battery life on the gimbal. The other new addition is this scroll wheel on the side that replaces the rocker on the side of the OM5, which just like the thumb pad joystick, really didn't give you finite control. Now this new wheel on the side can control focus and zoom. So within the DJI Mimo app, you can of course tap to set your focus, but if you press that side wheel button in, it will switch to manual focus and allow you to rack focus by spinning the wheel, giving you a really smooth transition. The one thing that would make this way better is the ability to use focus peaking, which I couldn't find in the early build of the Mimo app. You can also use this wheel to zoom and switch between the cameras, so it gives you a nice smooth scrolling zoom all the way through. I just wish that that jump between cameras on the back of the phone was a little bit more seamless. Saving the best for last though, probably my favorite addition to the design is the locking arm here in the back, so it's not flopping all around. It's almost like the locking arms that are found on the Ronin. Now moving on from the design, there's also an upgraded version of Active Track, so Active Track 5.0, which will of course keep your subject in frame automatically. For example, if you wanted to vlog and move around, you can keep yourself centered by just dragging a box over your face. From here, you can forget about controlling your camera and focus on making your video. It's super impressive how it keeps up with fast movements, and really, my test of Active Track comes through its use on DJI's drones. If it can keep up with me on my one wheel while also dodging obstacles, I think it'll do a really good job at staying still and keeping you or the subject that you're capturing in frame. Now the final big difference, or I guess you could say feature that's been added here in the Osmo Mobile 6 has really made an impact on my daily shooting and it's called Quick Launch. And as it sounds, it basically lets you get up and shooting with this gimbal a lot faster than previous gimbals. So all you need to do to get the OM6, the Osmo Mobile 6 set up is unlock the arm, pop the arm up, it'll automatically turn on, present itself, and then you just need to snap your smartphone in place. It stabilizes, balances, and now you're ready to go. And now aside from those three differences, much of what the Osmo Mobile 6 can do is very similar to the OM5 and even previous smartphone gimbals before that. I really like the magnetic mount because it's easy to get started shooting and easy to dismantle the throw in your bag. The motors are nice and strong to support larger phones that are growing in popularity like the Pro Max iPhones, and the Mimo app has really come a long way. I personally liked to use the stock camera app on my iPhone when shooting because the experience was just better, but I would still probably use like Filmic Pro over any of the options but there are some enticing features like Active Track that make it worth a download. The folding design is also great to throw in your bag as it doesn't take up much space. I even used the built-in selfie stick quite a bit to get some unique angles like reaching over a wall to get closer to this fountain and even down low as I was riding on my one wheel. That little extra reach that I got gave me the ability to fit my legs and board in the frame perfectly. At the end of the day though, it's a gimbal. It's got three motors. It stabilizes your phone, which then stabilizes your camera. And I say this no matter matter which gimbal that I'm talking about, if it can do that, if it can give you smoother looking video, then it's done its job and there's not much more that you can ask for. I mean, sure, DJ could come and improve the ergonomics, they could give you a lighter frame, they could improve the battery life, they could change up the button layout to make that experience overall better of using that piece of equipment, but is it going to make a difference in the final video that you capture? Probably not. Now, if we look at these two gimbals, for example, here we've got the RS2 and the RS3, both of them look exactly 
exactly identical. I use this for a lot of professional work, like outside of YouTube. I was using the RS2 for over a year. This was my workhorse. It was a great gimbal. And when the RS3 was coming out, I was like, hey, I'm not sure if there's gonna be much of a reason to upgrade if they look exactly identical. But then I saw that there was an improvement to the motors and the stabilization algorithm. And I said, well, hey, if I buy this gimbal, it's actually gonna have a difference or make a difference in the final video that I capture. It'll be more stable. So in my opinion, that was a no-brainer upgrade because it actually improved the video that I capture rather than just say, add some new buttons and give me a bigger battery. What's really the most important in this setup is the camera on the phone that you're shooting with. In my case here, I'm using the iPhone 13 Pro Max because my iPhone 14 Pro Max still hasn't shipped. But regardless, the video still looks fantastic because Apple focuses so much on making video in their phones a priority. I can show you all the video that I want, but regardless, your mileage will vary depending on the phone that you have. To further emphasize my point earlier, some of this footage could easily have been taken on the OM5 and you wouldn't be able to tell a difference because it it's just as smooth. Now let me continue to play devil's advocate here and bring up the elephant in the room and that is the always improving electronic image stabilization in not only the iPhone, but most smartphones available here on the market. Now just to show you how crazy good this EIS has gotten, let me show you some example clips of myself running down the sidewalk with the wide camera and the ultra wide camera with and without help from the Osmo Mobile 6. Again, this is me running and not trying to stabilize the phone whatsoever. And even though the clips that were taken with my phone mounted on the gimbal are just a bit more smooth. I really do think that the built-in electronic image stabilization does a great job at smoothing out most of the bumps. And remember, I was literally running in these videos. The electronic image stabilization was really only built to mitigate little shakes and bumps in your hand when filming. Now, just for jokes, here's a side-by-side -side that I thought was really interesting. On one side is the smoothed out video coming from my iPhone's camera. And on the other is a screen recording of that same clip without the EIS added to the video. It's bouncing around like crazy, but turns out to be a perfectly usable video in the file that's saved to my phone. Now look, I think that there will always be a place for mechanical image stabilization in the future, like using an external device like a three axis mechanical gimbal, but electronic image stabilization has come such a long way to the point where in like three or four years from now, I think that EIS is going to be the way to go for most videos that we capture if it isn't already the way to go for most of the videos we capture. I mean, think about it, GoPro cameras, iPhones, everything is EIS. It's getting good. <laughs> You know, I just keep coming back to this clip that I captured when on my one wheel. Sure, I could have gotten a selfie stick and tried to get the same shot, but having that extra stabilization is why this clip looks so smooth and why the camera was able to stay level with the horizon. Now, one of the biggest reasons that I think the Osmo Mobile is a great accessory to buy for your phone is that the ergonomics when shooting with it are just so much better. If you remember the video I posted when I crashed my drone out in Las Vegas, I pretty much shot that entire video by just pointing the ultra wide camera at myself and going, which proved to be really uncomfortable. The electronic image stabilization though really kicks ass here as I'm hiking over rocks and the video is smooth as can be. Coming back to a recent clip shot here on the nice smooth pavement of Philadelphia, I was using the Osmo Mobile 6 combined with active track so that the ultra wide camera would keep me in frame and being able to relax my arm down a little made all the difference when filming with this setup. Not to mention all the other clips that I shared captured with the Osmo Mobile here in this video were so much easier to capture because I was able to grip the handle with two hands rather than trying to pinch my slippery phone in between my fingers. Now, just to share some of my own personal work, I've been using this gimbal a lot for real estate walkthrough videos to be posted as Instagram Reels. So what you guys are seeing right now is the final edited version. Isn't it crazy that we can now make money by shooting with our iPhones? So basically I walk through the home, speed up the boring parts and add some motion blur and that's pretty much it. I think that this is a really fun way to show off a property and the process is really easy. The video is super smooth and the dynamic range on the iPhone is next level. So I just let the camera automatically adjust exposure as I move from room to room and inside to outside. That's really the fun of this setup for me. The iPhone is so good at making shooting video easy and with the improved stabilization from the Osmo and the improved ergonomics, it allows me to focus more on the content of the video and not getting into the weeds with exposure and white balance. So my final verdict here, I would probably not be upgrading my Osmo Mobile every single year. I'd probably do it like every two or three years, but I'd focus on upgrading my phone because that's where you're going to get the improved image quality and the phone and the camera is really the pinnacle of your setup. This thing just kind of stabilizes your phone. So again, I'd go on like a two or three year upgrade just because they will eventually come out with new features that make it worth the upgrade. So if you're an OM5 user, maybe just hang on to that for one more year and see if next iPhone season, they come out with like an Osmo Mobile 
Mobile 7, for example. I can't believe I'm already mentioning Osmo Mobile 7 when this thing just came out. But I would say wait and figure out if there's gonna be a larger upgrade or more of a reason for you to upgrade your gimbal. Now, if you're somebody that is just picking up a gimbal for the first time for your smartphone, definitely look into the OM6 here, the Osmo Mobile 6. It's got a lot of great features, super easy to use. Again, the quick launch feature is like my favorite. You just open it up, turns right on, you snap your phone on, and now you're ready to get shooting. So guys, if you're interested in the Osmo Mobile 6, I'll leave a link down in the description. Let me know your thoughts on this gimbal in the comments. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.